What I want to spend the remaining 20 minutes or so right now to talk about is standing wave, definitely. And I think we might have time to talk about something called the beat. So I'll try to get through standing wave as soon as possible. So standing wave is sort of what it sounds like, you know? Wave, that's a standing. So I want you to take that as a con contrast from what we've been talking about so far, traveling wave. So when you look at this wave, it's obviously traveling from left to right, right? So that's traveling wave. So I want to try to get this wave to be standing, not traveling anywhere. So the obvious thing to do might be this, you know, put an end here. So let's put a fixed end there. Oops, uh, let me restart. Because I, so that might be something you do. But when you look at this over some period of time, you see that the kind of motion you get, it's really complicated motion. So, I mean, it's clearly not traveling anywhere, but I wouldn't also call this really standing. This is a very chaotic kind of motion that, you know, neither traveling nor standing, right? So to get something that we call standing wave, you have to meet a, well, I didn't expect that. Um, you have to meet a very particular condition to get a, something that we are going to call standing wave. So this is where I want to remind you of what we called wave superposition last time. What happens, wave superposition? Uh, that's the question of what happens when two waves overlap. As in, you have a wave f1 and f, so f1, that's a function of position and time, that's a overlapping, overlaps with f2. The function of same position and same time. So when these two waves overlap, what is the, what is the overall result of those two overlapping waves? We talked about this last time, right? Kinda. Do you remember? They simply add. That's the rule. Um, so um, it's a sort of a kind of a amazing coincidence that that simple rule describes what actually happens. So, um, so we call that superposition principle. Superposition principle is that the the overlapping the combined wave f is simply the simple sum of the two components of that overlapping waves. So the reason I'm mentioning it is I want to think of the standing wave that we are going to develop as a sum of two waves. So here's one way actually you can kind of imagine it here. Let me go back to pulse mode here. Then um, what I can describe standing wave as is as a sum of a periodic wave that's traveling from left to right as represented by this pulse and a periodic wave that's traveling from right to left, as represented by this pulse that's traveling from right to left. Because of this reflecting boundary, that's what you are going to have. When you put in this oscillating wave from left, then over time, it'll reflect from this end. And right now here, it's difficult to see. But the, the in-between motion that you see here is a result of two waves that are adding together. One wave that's traveling from left to right, another wave that's traveling from right to left. Now with the standing wave, um, we need one more thing. We need to fix the frequency at a very particular value. So when we are talking about traveling wave, this frequency could be anything. There was no real condition on it. But here, when I set this frequency to be anything, you don't get standing wave. The, sh no, the shape you saw, that's not what we describe as a standing wave. So let me make a quick measurement to get the correct value of frequency. This is the quick measurement I'm going to make. Here's a special amount of time that will help me set the correct value of frequency. So let me have my timer here, let it run. So when I start running simulation, the timer will run as well. So I'm going to see how long it takes for a pulse to travel from here to the end here. So that amount of time will Ready, set, okay, so I need to do it frame by frame. All right, something like, okay, 1.18 seconds. All right, so let's call that the period. 
I need a frequency that's associated with that 1.18 second. So 1 over 1.18 seconds. Uh, I could have just 0 0.85 hertz. So I feel like that's a special frequency. So let me set my frequency at that value. And let's see what happens. 0 0.85 hertz. And actually, I'm going to reduce the amplitude way down for the demonstration that I'm going to do now. Um, let me set this back to normal, get rid of the timer. Um, let's see what happens. So this is what you are going to begin to see happen. So I set the frequency at a very particular amount of time so that the period of my oscillation is the exact amount of time it takes for the wave to travel from here to here, which means, um, let me write this down. So let's say I describe this as the distance L. And if I set my period, if I set my period to be equal to the amount of time needed to travel this distance, that will be L divided by wave speed. Right? So, or in other words, the distance L here is equal to period times the velocity, or um, uh, rewriting period as uh, frequency. Yeah, that happens over time. Um, so, that, that, don't get rid So, period is frequency 1 over F. So, L would be V times uh, or V over frequency. And looking at this, mm, uh, looking at this expression that we are uh, working with before, that L there is equal to the wavelength. So here, this, uh, this distance L, when this distance L is equal to the wavelength lambda, then that's when you get this pattern that we call standing wave. And when you look at this wave carefully, um, you can s intuitively see why we call this a standing wave. This wave has the points that don't really move. So some of the points don't move for a good reason. The point at the very end, it doesn't, uh, so once again, that um, sort of change in the amplitude over time, ignore that for now, that's an artifact in the simulation. Um, it, yeah, it's, but the point at the end, um, that point doesn't move um, for, a, uh, for a very good reason, that it, that's a fixed point. I clamped it down, I made it so that it cannot move, right? The fact that that point here doesn't move all that much is actually more perplexing. Because you know, it looks like that's the point where I'm shaking, right? So what do I mean that the point doesn't move? It doesn't move compared to the rest of the wave. Because you know, look at how much oscillation happens here. Compared to that, amount of oscillation that happens is practically zero. So that's what I mean this point doesn't move. And here's the weirdest thing. Is there any good reason why this point should not be moving? So that's a description. Well, we actually, we want to be careful with the word amplitude. Amplitude refers to the entire wave. So I would not talk about amplitude over this single point. Think what you mean by amplitude is the dis displacement. And when you say displacement is very small, you're simply rewording what I already said, that this point does not move. I'm asking you, is there a reason why the displacement should be small here? So it's going to be the result of the superposition. And I'll show this to you in math. But when you just, so you know, aside from superposition that we'll look at soon, um, there's nothing holding this bead here. So there's no physical reason like these two end points that this point should be a non-moving point. But this is a feature you see in standing wave. There will be points along the medium where the displacement is zero. And the only thing that's causing the displacement here to be zero is the wave superposition, or what we call wave interference. It's the addition of wave that's traveling from left to right, and the addition of wave that's traveling from right to left. They add in such a way that at this point, they always add in a way that they cancel out. 
And how that happens will depend on the frequency. So we use the frequency 0.85 hertz. You can actually go a little bit lower and get another standing wave. So let me do that. Um, I can actually go at half this frequency and we'll get a standing wave. So let me go to 0.42. So 0.42 and then I'll reset. And you will see a standing wave building up over time. By the way, one way to intuitively describe this is as, as an energy building here. This thing shaking, it's trying to do work, and it, somehow the timing works out so that each time it shakes, it's doing positive work. And it's putting energy into this um, string system. And um, so, so if this reminds you of the resonance that we talked about in oscillation, it should. This is an example of resonance. This uh, wave system has a natural oscillation frequency. This is, would be the lowest of those natural oscillation frequency. And when you shake it at that natural oscillation frequency, you can build up a very large amplitude using very small amplitude of driving oscillation. Yeah. So this is an example of the, um, this is what we also call fundamental harmonic. It's the lowest frequency oscillation. Um, um, you know, um, you have two fixed points at the end. Those have to be fixed points. And um, you saw what happens when we double this frequency, right? Let me give you the triple this frequency and let's see what happens. So if I triple the frequency, um, let's see. So 0 0.42, triple, 1.26. And I'm just going to add the one because there's this a little rounding thing that I have to worry about. So I'll set this at 1.26. I'm sorry, 1.27. So 1.26 is the exact triple of what was there, but there's a little rounded thing I have to worry about, so I'll just add one. All right, so restart, and let's see what happens. So this is what you see. Um, you see this stationary point showing up as enough, once enough time passed for this standing wave pattern to build up. So um, this is probably a good picture for me to use to introduce a couple terms that we used to describe features in a standing wave. So these points that I have marked here, these points, we call them nodes. So these are called nodes. Definition of node is that it's a point that doesn't move in a standing wave. Or this is the standing part of the standing wave. And um, as long as I'm talking about nodes, let me talk about antinodes. So what we call antinodes in a standing wave are these points, sort of the space place right in between the nodes. All these points are what we call antinode. It's sort of what it sounds like, you know, the opposite of node. <laughs> so if the node is the point on the standing wave that doesn't move, Antinode is the point on the standing wave that moves the most. 